Hi everybody. In last week's video blog, I had a chat to you about childhood trauma and the devastating long-lasting effects that it can have on a child's life in terms of their mental health, their cognitive abilities, even in terms of physical health. And this week, I want to have a chat to you about secondary trauma. Now, what is secondary trauma? Let's start with primary trauma. Primary trauma is when a child experiences a traumatic event firsthand. Whereas secondary trauma is when a child experiences trauma just by hearing about a traumatic event or seeing images of such an event on TV or in the media. I often feel that secondary trauma is almost a bit more of a hidden kind of trauma. And I feel that it's exactly in this aspect that the danger really lies. Because we don't often realize the massive impact that the things that children hear or see could actually have on them. You might be sitting at a friend's house, drinking a glass of wine and chatting to her about an upsetting event in your life, perhaps, you know, in your own attempt to process what had happened. And we, you might not realize that your child is in the next room listening and hearing all of this stuff. And what makes that kind of situation so much more difficult is that children don't really have the insight or the abstract thinking ability to realize, they're not age appropriately realizing exactly what happened or the elements of what happened. Sometimes an event that happened to you that was mildly upsetting might be very, very upsetting and very traumatic for a child. And, you know, I find that Similarly, the media, unfortunately, there is this sensationalistic element to the media because bad news sells. And so I find that sometimes children see things on the news that really affect them. You know, you might be doing your best to try your keep your child away from all of these aggressive and violent uh, videos or, you know, video games. And unknowingly, your child is perhaps playing in the lounge while parents are watching news and they're exposed to all of these graphic and upsetting images. And again, children don't have the abstract reasoning ability to put that all into context. So the news might be showing, you know, for instance, like a riot that broke out in a city far away about an issue that's not relevant, you know, in, in your area. But children don't realize that this is not something that is necessarily going to happen. So they might go to bed worried that in the middle of the night, an angry mob is going to pitch up outside of their house and they don't know how to process that fear. So it is especially important that we are super vigilant about what our children are exposed to and be careful not to dismiss signs of trauma just because you know that your child hasn't experienced a trauma personally. It's very important that we are open and honest in our discussions with children about their fears and the things that we upset them. Don't just dismiss it when your child comes to you and tells you about a fear, even if it seems irrational to you. And it's very important to assure them that everything is going to be okay. And like we said in last week's video, that you're really going to do everything you can to try and keep them safe. And that warm, supportive relationship that we discussed in last week's video with an adult or a parent or a caregiver is so very, very important to help protect our children from experiencing trauma or from trauma really settling into the body and affecting it in the long term. And if your child is showing signs of trauma, even if it's secondary trauma, and you talk through it with them, you play through it with them, you give them all the support and guidance that you can, 
and they still continue to seem to struggle, it might be very important to give them the opportunity to go for therapy or some play therapy to work through that. Now, as an aside, I know that many of you watching this video might be teachers or other mental health care practitioners or perhaps even medical people who work with kids in a pediatric way. And if you're watching this, I think it's important to keep in mind or just to remind you that many caregivers and service providers also experience secondary trauma. You know, when you're working with a child and you hear some of the horrific stories that come out and some of the very difficult situations and uh, abuse and that kind of stuff that children have gone through, it's very dangerous to, affect, to think that it won't affect you. So please also take care of your own mental health. Be aware of the signs of secondary trauma. And that's all I have for you this week. I am sending you lots and lots of well wishes for the week ahead. And then I'll see you next week for our video on how to tell your children about divorce. Thanks, everybody. Have a good week.